it's time once again for another episode of Atlanta Legal Experts Radio, broadcasting live from the Pro Business Channel studios in Atlanta. And now here's your host, Emily Rowell. Good morning. It's Emily Rowell with Atlanta Legal Experts Radio coming to you live from the Pro Business Channel studios in Buckhead. I have Brian Anino here with the Anino Law Firm. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Good morning, Emily. Uh, I'm good. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm going to get right to it and ask you a few things about your practice. Now tell me, you are family owned and operated. Can you tell me a little bit about, about that? Yes, I started my firm in 2009, and I was lucky to have my wife join me uh, a year Fantastic. later, and she's our office manager and paralegal. So we truly are a family-owned firm, and uh, as a result, uh, we have experience uh, being a family-owned firm and love working with family-owned businesses. Gotcha. So you specialize in what types of businesses? Uh, we specialize in businesses of all industries, uh, both family-owned and non-family-owned, uh, anywhere from a, a, a very small micro-business, a startup, to uh, multi-million dollar uh, franchisors uh, in the middle market area. Yeah, fantastic. And what kind of things do you do for these businesses? Well, you know, through my 10 years of experience, I've been able to develop a lot of areas of expertise, both in the transactional realm and the litigation uh, so we can work with businesses from their initiation, starting up, ensuring that they're set up in the right legal entity uh, all the way through their growth cycle. Uh, we provide uh, very good strategies for smart corporate growth. And uh, in addition, we work with our clients in the event that they are subject of litigation. Uh, a special focus of our uh, law firm uh, involves representing businesses that are subject of attorney general investigations. Uh, you know, big story in the in a political world is Donald Trump. Obviously, Donald Trump is subject of investigation in the state of New York for Trump University and his various entities related to that. Uh, I've represented businesses that have been subject of attorney general investigations in many states, New York being one of them. So I'm very familiar with what Donald Trump and his lawyers are, are going through right now and responding to the allegations raised by the state of New York. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. Um, wonderful, Brian. Thank you so much. And it's Brian Anino with the Anino Law Firm. Again, you're listening to Atlanta Legal Experts Radio, and I'm going to share a little bit about Brian. Let's talk about your past a little bit. So how did you get into law? What was your, what's your story? You know, interestingly, <laughs> I uh, went to law school thinking that I was going to uh, stay in government. I was working for uh, Senator Joe Lieberman in Connecticut at the time, and uh, you know, was involved in wow. his... Uh, political campaign, of course, the 2000 presidential election has gone down in history. I think until now is one of the more interesting ones, right? Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it was my second summer in law school. I started working with an attorney and just fell in love with practicing law. And I knew that that was really going to be my focus for, uh, you know, my next 30 years. And I'm 10 years into it and, and loving it so far. So I truly can say... That I, I love my job. I can tell that you love your job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love my job. You cannot fake loving your job. No kidding. Yeah. We're very lucky to do what we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like you with small business owners. We're a small business, mm -hmm. and we see small businesses every day. And because we're a small business, we, love, we understand how mm -hmm. to start and grow a small business. So we tell people when we meet with them, especially if they're just starting out. Right. You want to come with us because we're going to help you. Right. So tell me some of the things that helps uh, your clients being a family-owned business. How does that help your clients? Well, we, we understand the various needs of family-owned businesses. Uh, you, you know, we understand that planning for the future is a very crucial element of a family-owned business. Uh, you know, one of the, the neat things that we've been doing, particularly over the last couple of years, uh, since the end of the Great Recession, you know, mm. businesses have been able to get back to planning for the future. Uh, you know, family-owned business wants to ensure that the business stays in the family. Sure. What is the best way to structure that? So we look at how the entity is structured. We uh, plan on whether we're going to gift out uh, stock to family members over time, whether that is going to be transferred upon death. And we come up with the best strategy from 
a legal perspective, but we also bring in trusted CPAs and financial advisors to ensure that the decisions are being made in the best interest from a tax perspective. So you almost like form a team for these clients. Yes, I am a big believer in having a team uh, work with us in order to get where we need. Uh, oftentimes, a, a business will require a business valuation mm-hmm. uh, prior to, to, to uh, commencing any of our succession planning. Uh, so we have great business valuation analysts that can help us go through the process of getting a business valuation done. But you know, teamwork is critical. Uh, you know, family-owned businesses and small businesses in general understand the value of teamwork. That's why I like having a good team uh, working with us. Fantastic. So tell me, if somebody's deciding to or thinking about uh, buying a business, what are some things they need to consider before they do that? Well, uh, this is the we love working with folks that are interested in buying a business. I mean, that, it gets me excited. I love the spirit of entrepreneurs. I believe in entrepreneurism. Uh, I was just reading an article uh, uh, this morning about how entrepreneurism is the key way to building wealth. And it's, it's an awesome thing, which means yeah. financial security for the family. Sure. Uh, however, uh, it, you know, it's such an emotionally driven process that you need trusted legal advice. You need trusted uh, CPA and financial advisor advice. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, again, it's such an emotionally driven process. You know, I, I'm a Jeep guy. I love Jeeps, off-road vehicles, right? Yeah. I get excited when I see one. Does that mean <laughs> when I'm at the lot that I, that I should buy one immediately? No. I mean, I, I need to talk with someone and make sure it's the right, the right deal for me. You know, I'll go sure. to Consumer Reports. I'll go, you know, to, to certain other publications, and I'll talk to folks and make sure that I'm getting a good model, good year, and, and, and the right components. Right. That's where we come in with, with working with business folks. Mm-hmm. You know, we, if it's a franchise, we do due diligence on the franchisor through a variety of, of, of methods. Uh, if it's an independent business, uh, we ensure that it's structured correctly, you know, from a tax and legal perspective. You know, we look at how many folks are going to be part of this new business, mm-hmm. what the overall goal for the business is in the future. Is, it, is the goal truly to keep it in the family, or do you want to bring in investors in the future? All kinds of reasons that uh, bringing an attorney in as early as possible in the process saves money in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see that. A lot of people start off because they're excited about what they're right. doing. They're probably trying to help people. They get on their mission, which is wonderful, but you have to plan. I, I think I learned, what was it? Um, oh, I can't think of the, the saying that I learned. Yeah, pl- what was it? Plan. Prepare to plan and or um, help us or out, pl- Brian. Yeah. Prepare to plan or plan to, <laughs> to fail. fail. There, yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the attorney comes uh, in to save well, the day. Yeah. <laughs> I've <laughs> used that. I've and I, I believe in that strongly. Fail, no, fail the plan or you plan to fail. Yeah. That's what it is. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That's what it, it was. You know, it's. Um, it's so important, <laughs> though. We get excited, and not, you know, business folks. I mean, we are excited about our our, our concepts, and that, again, that's why I love working with entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, your, your entity needs to be set up correctly. If I have to come in in the middle of the process to to to, to fix it, it's more expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, similar to litigation. If someone comes to me halfway through a court case, it's going to be more expensive. If I have to get involved in an attorney general investigation after subpoenas have already been responded to initially, then it's going to be more expensive. Right. So, uh, you know, we love talking with folks. Come into our office. Give me a call if there's any questions whatsoever. I'm always going to talk to you, but as early as you can talk to me in the process, the less expensive it's going to be. Right, right. So tell me, um, you you are, like we were talking about, your family um, you know, your family business and you work with other family businesses mm-hmm. and you do the estate planning. Yes. Um, so I'm guessing that kind of brings you to the elder law as yes, well. That's because correct. obviously you have everybody in the family that you have to prepare for. That's right. You know, we, we handle estate planning, uh, not just for family businesses, but for individuals that are just concerned about the future, uh, and ensuring that, 
their children are taken care of, Mm -hmm. ensuring that their final wishes are met through a last will and testament. But, uh, you know, an often overlooked issue, ensuring that your uh, health care needs are are met through a health care directive. You know, the the famous uh, Terry Schiavo case a few years ago in Florida, everyone remembers, that kind of brought health uh, care directives to the forefront. Um, We're a big believer in that. No one in the government or a doctor that you've never met should never, or the second cousin that you haven't talked to in 25 years, should not make the final determination over what you want to happen to you. Right. Um, For you the know, probate court. Correct. That's exactly right. Yes. Um, so our elder law uh, is, is a natural component to that. Uh, folks that are concerned about incapacity in the future, uh, you know, helping the elderly is a special uh uh, cause it's an important uh, concept for both my wife and me because we've you know we've seen our family members get older our mm-hmm. grandparents get older I, my 104 year old grandfather bless him just passed away and we celebrated wow. his life three weeks ago uh great wow. great great man but we need yeah uh, he, he was an awesome guy we just need to prepare for the future and that's where elder law comes into play so tell me, how do you get new, how do you get more business? How do you get your clients? Do you network? What's do you we? Get I, I'm a big believer in networking. Uh, mm-hmm. Rich and I were just catching up a few minutes ago. We had met, I think, seven years ago at the Cobb Chamber of Commerce. We're very active in the community. Um, we've been blessed over the last five years to get referrals almost solely from our existing clients, and you know we're very proud of that fact. That's huge. Yeah. No, that means you're doing, you're actually helping them and they, they see the value. So they refer to other people. That's wonderful. Well, I appreciate that. You know, it's, uh, we've been very blessed to, to get, to, to get that feedback. So tell me what's a good day for you. Good day. Uh, spending <laughs> time with my wife and son in the early morning, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> and then coming going on, to the office. Coming on Atlanta Legal Experts. Coming right on it. <laughs> yes. Coming in here. That's right. That's right. Uh, Go ahead. My wife and I get to the office. Uh, we catch up on emails and calls. And, you know, typically I use the morning to, um, you know, strategize over transactions. Uh, there are some days that we'll be in court early. Um, but, you know that we just are able to 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 change our schedule around pretty quickly around that so you you know in addition to the transactions i truly love being in court uh, and i Mm -hmm. think we find a good balance of transactional and litigated matters now tell me um where people can reach you uh our website has great information and just go to anino law firm.com a-n-n-i-n-o law firm.com you can also connect to me, connect with me via Twitter or LinkedIn, and we also have a Facebook page uh, that uh, I think we're close to 500 folks that are that are following us. And and I like to just you know post information about uh, legal news that affects people's lives. You know, for example, the uh, Donald Trump example I, I passed on earlier. That that's brought the issue of attorney general investigations into into the light. But the reality is across the country. You have attorneys general that are launching investigations, consumer protection investigations against individuals and small businesses, and, and subpoenas are getting sent out every day. And the 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 way to handling that correctly at an early stage mm-hmm. can save not just a lot of money, but it can save somebody's livelihood. And uh, you know we're proud of our successes in that arena. Okay, well, look him up. Brian Anino with the Anino Law Firm. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks very much, Emily. Yes, you are listening to Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. My name is Emily Rowell. I am your host, and welcome to Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. I have Chad Schultz here with me. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you so much for being here this morning. He's with Gordon and Reese, LLP. Chad, tell me, what are the top three things every company should be doing to avoid, to avoid employee lawsuits? Yes, exactly. I represent employers in employment discrimination lawsuits and other challenges by employees. And there are really three things that every employer should do. The first one is to train managers to do the things to avoid lawsuits. I say that for a couple of reasons. One is... The same things that you do to avoid lawsuits are the things that you do to build a strong team of the employees that you do have. 
So training managers is really critical. The second thing that I think employers should do, and it's these are the things that I would do if I owned the company, uh, is to have somebody come in and take a look at your policies, specifically how you pay employees. Okay. The biggest... Um, the biggest opportunity out there, if you will, is uh, plaintiffs' lawyers who are looking for employees who have not been paid properly. That is, they didn't get overtime or they're on a salary when, in fact, they should be hourly. And those lawsuits are really a detriment to companies. Mm, so I yes. would do, a, uh, I would check out all of your policies and practices to make sure that you're doing things legally. And then I would also uh, make sure that your policies that you have in your employee handbook are policies that help the employer and are fair to the employees, but not something that's going to come back and create problems for the employer in the future. So those are the three things. The first is train the managers. Exactly. Uh, And also have somebody look at your policies and your your paying procedures. Right. And then also the employee handbook. Keep it updated. Exactly. And one other thing that I would do uh, as far as policies is I would have an arbitration clause for your pay policies. And that arbitration clause would keep you from, first of all, presenting that case to a jury, which can be very expensive and time-consuming and risky for the employer. And also it keeps you from having a class action lawsuit when it comes to your overtime pay. Thank you. That's Chad Schultz with Gordon and Reese LLP with Employment Law. And we're going to learn a little bit about Chad Schultz here on Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. He practices employment law on the management side with a national law firm, Gordon Reese. He has defended lawsuits in over 30 states in his 27 plus year career. And he also helps companies with policies and practices to avoid legal challenges that are brought all too commonly by employees against their employers. So it does happen a lot. Exactly. (laughs) Wow. So tell me a little more. How did you get into law? Uh, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I had an uncle who was a lawyer, and uh, he had always encouraged me in that direction. And I was from the Midwest, so I ended up getting to Atlanta through Emory Law School. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And tell me a little bit more about you. What was the process like um, um, with Emory Law? Like, how did you end up at Gordon and Reese? Well, that's an interesting story. Um, I actually, like I say, I was from the Midwest, so I went to South Dakota to law school, and then I clerked with a federal judge in South Dakota and then found out about a program they had at Emory, which was a master's in litigation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's beyond law school. So that's what brought me to Atlanta. And then I've practiced here in Atlanta employment law um, really my entire career, and then went to Gordon Reese two years ago. It's a national firm that is headquartered out in California, but about 700 lawyers and 37 offices around the country. And they do all kinds of areas of law, but employment is about a third of what the firm does. And that's obviously your focus, your niche. Yes, exactly. That's what I've done really my entire career. Now, how do you help these employees? Can you tell me a little more? The main thing that I do is help employers to avoid litigation. Okay. And then also with the employers more than always with the employers. What you'll find on the um, people who do employment law is they do one or the other side. It's hard to do both. Uh, So I've always represented management. Uh, I do that with litigation, and then we have uh, also I help companies through arbitration. Um, I'm a mediator here in Atlanta. Uh, so just the all in that area is very broad scope. Sure, sure. Um, and so how do you find new em- clients, new employers to help, besides coming on Atlanta Legal Experts Radio? <laughs> it really is just a networking thing, and it's getting to know people. Uh-huh. And uh, so that people know who they can trust with their issues. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've also stay really active. Um, I'm currently the president of Atlanta Legal Aid Society. Okay. Uh, so I meet a lot of people through there. I'm also very active with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, mm-hmm. uh, locally and nationally. Sure. And uh, also teach at Emory Law School, which is really a, a great way to get to know 
new lawyers, uh, young lawyers. That's that's good. That's, that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it works well. Keep it keeps me busy. Sure. So I'm guessing also, um, like Brian does, he helps with the small businesses and planning and stuff like that. Do you work with those types of attorneys to you know help with their employers as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we really I represent large companies, but also smaller. And uh, the things that we were talking about, the the three things to prevent lawsuits and also to build strong teams, really those things to apply to any employer of any size. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. So tell me, why are there so many employ- employment-based suits? Well, if you look at the the just the numbers, mm-hmm. there are uh, approximately um, twenty million people that are wor- that um, get displaced annually. And most people, if they get displaced and it's not their idea to leave, believe that in some way they've been treated unfairly. And it's easy to find lawyers who will help you with those cases. Mm-hmm. In fact, the number of lawyers in the United States has, has doubled since 1980, doubled plus. Um, and they're very accessible through the Internet, Uh, it's easy to find a lawyer who will help you with those cases. So I think that's why you see an increase. I don't believe that there is more discrimination in the workplace today than there was 20 years ago. In fact, I think quite the opposite. But I think that uh, there are a lot of people who believe they've been treated unfairly and they look to uh, the tools that they can use to get into the courtroom. And it's usually the discrimination lawsuits. A lot of people are more educated. Absolutely. Than, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and people believe that they have been treated unfairly, and they know how to find people who will help them to uh, right what they believe is, is wrong. I love the way you say to train managers in the beginning, so to really start off on the right foot. And that way you're kind of avoiding a, fi- a later emergency or fire. The really hard thing to do for managers is to have those difficult discussions with employees that aren't meeting their expectations. Mm. Those are really hard discussions to have. And in, instead of having those discussions, often when, it, when managers aren't trained properly, they avoid those discussions until it gets to the point where they just don't want to work with this person anymore. Yeah. At that point, what I believe happens is The person who is the employee uh, believes they're being treated unfairly and they're being singled out and they're not getting fair opportunities at work. And they look for that. Why is that? Well, I haven't been told that I'm not doing a good job. uh, So it can't be my performance. It has to be my race, my religion, my age, one of those things. Anything personal. So you can see how that happens. I don't believe that it is discrimination in almost all cases, but I do believe that managers who don't handle the situation properly can leave someone with that impression. Sure. And so I think that's where it comes in, where you've got to train managers that you've got to be willing to have those hard discussions with employees so that they know where they stand, so that if their performance isn't meeting expectations, there's not a communication gap there. Right. That's so that's so important. And also to write everything down. If it's not written down, it didn't happen. <laughs> right. uh, especially in today where we're constantly sending emails and text messages. Um, oh, yeah, it's just huge. not believed that if you come into a courtroom and you say, this, perf- this employee was not performing, but yet there's no documentation of that, it makes it very difficult for a jury to believe that. Sure. So, and it's important. It's just a he said, she said kind of thing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's important also to train managers on what is proper to write down. You know, communication is really the key to that, but it's not something that people just do naturally. I think they need to be taught mm-hmm. and they need to hone in those skills because that makes a world of difference when it comes to uh, employment lawsuits. That's huge. And I think communication, I mean, that's what you described when you were answering everything. It's all about communicating. Um, so anybody that's in a management position that can't do that probably should not be in that position. Exactly. And that, and I've actually written a, a small book about that called Manage Your Employees or Get Out of the Way, which is exactly <laughs> what that says is being a supervisor is not 
the right thing for everybody, right? right? Right. And if you think about this, the worst thing that a good employee can do to you is to leave. And the worst thing that a really bad employee can do is stay, stay. right? <laughs> and so the same kinds of things that you use to keep your best employees are the things that you use to help those who aren't performing find other opportunities elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it really is important that you have that communication because it is what builds the strongest team. If you've got an employee who's not performing, and everybody else on the team knows it, but you're not having those hard discussions and not doing anything about it, then your best em- your best employees will find another place to perform because they just don't think it's fair. That's so true. And to, to concentrate on the ones that aren't performing is actually detrimental. Spending more time on the ones that are, are is actually better for your business. Well, the 80-20 rule definitely applies. And we just need to help managers to recognize that the best use of their time is to make sure that those who aren't performing know it Mm -hmm. so that you're right, so that you're spending more time on those who are your performers. I love it. Tell us a little bit more about your book. Uh, Well, the book has got 10 rules, again, to avoiding lawsuits and just goes through a common sense approach for supervisors. And it's a short book so that a supervisor, anybody can read it in mm-hmm. 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And it just gives managers things to think about. Um, none of this, frankly, is rocket science. <laughs> um, but it helps to have the common sense brought to their attention so that they can think about how to apply some of those common sense rules to their workplace and their work teams. I'm sure that it helps, too, just to be a good reminder so to use it since it's uh, such a short book just to use it on a regular basis to just bring you back to okay wait a minute what do i need to do now exactly and and just to to force you to think about some of the decisions that you're making on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. for example if you have a non-performer in your group and you haven't sat down with that person and explained what your expectations are and how that person is not meeting expectations um, if if what you're doing is just sitting there hoping that that person leaves on their own and finds another opportunity, then you're not doing your job as a supervisor. Mm-hmm. But frankly, there are times uh, in workplaces, none of my clients, but some clients, <laughs> some companies have this issue where they just they're hoping that the problem goes away rather yeah. than addressing it directly. It's hard to fire people. It's it, hard well, to let not, them go. It's really hard to even have the discussions with people that will help them be successful because right. you don't want, you know, you, be, you have a relationship with these people. You, you don't want to be the one who delivers bad news, right? Sure. So it, it takes some thinking about, you know, you're not being fair to that employee if you're not being up front with them and telling them what they need to do to improve. Because remember, the whole discipline thing is not that – we're punishing a person. Right. We're really trying to help people be more successful. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, it's just really important. So I always was told that um, if you do get to that point where you have to let them go, you have to remember as a manager that they actually fired themselves. And people should never be surprised. You haven't done it right if that person comes in and it's goes, completely I fucked. had no idea that it had gotten to this point, right? right? There should be no surprise. And if you're having the communication that you need to, it rarely actually gets to the point where you have to terminate someone's employment. That's good. Because most people, if they realize they're not performing and they're not meeting expectations, they will look for other opportunities. Mm. Or the best thing is if you spend a little bit of time with them and do the things that we're talking about, Hopefully, you can bring them to where they are a successful employee. So tell us, Chad, how can we find your book, and how can we contact you to find out more? Really, like I say, the the book, I want it to be used by um, companies to train their managers, so I'm happy to send anybody a copy of the book at no at no cost. Fantastic. And you can just reach out to me at um, my web, or at the email address, which is c. Schultz, S-H-U-L-T-Z, at Gordon Reese, 
and Gordon Reese's G O R D O N R E E S dot com. And uh, if if anybody wants to reach out and get a copy of the book, I'm happy to send them one. Thank you so much. That's Chad Schultz with Gordon and Reese LLP on Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. We really appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that does it for another episode of Atlanta Legal Experts Radio. This is Emily Rowell with Peachtree Offices signing out. Thank you again for joining Emily Rowell and her guests on the Pro Business Channel. Use the social media links here to share today's show. And stay tuned for the next episode of Atlanta Legal Experts Radio.